If you're an architect or an architecture student, then I would tell you to look into development. And there's a bunch of reasons why I would tell you to do that. But the main one, the one that I'm going to be covering in this video is your health. And that is your financial health and also the health of your mind. Now, the reason that I want to go in this direction for this video is because all the other reasons, although they're important, they're kind of more personal, whereas all architects kind of struggle with the same issues. And those underlying issues are that they don't make enough money and they just don't feel happy at their job. And really, the reason that they don't feel happy at their job is because they don't really have control over their career. They're usually stuck doing one very specific thing for a long time in their career. And it just sucks. You know, you go to school and you think you're going to be designing for the rest of your life and you're actually just collaborating on a very small element within the whole entire building. And I've covered this extensively in my other videos, so I'm not going to get into that specifically, but I'm going to talk to you about why developing solves both of these issues. Now, there's this misconception, right? There's this misconception that to be a developer, you need to have money. And this is a misconception that I had when I was leaving school and starting out my career. Um, another misconception that there is, is that developers are business people. And as architects and designers, we tend to think that we are not business people because we weren't trained in business. And actually both of those statements are true. Developers are business people and, archite and architects are not formally taught to be business people. And so that in my opinion is an issue. That's like a bug of school, not a feature. Like I don't think that architects learning about business means they're gonna be worse architects. I think in modern day architecture in the industry is very important for architects to know business. Otherwise, we're going to keep seeing the same issues that we constantly see in the industry. So just because you weren't trained in business or just because you incline more into the art side of architecture doesn't mean you should ignore the business side altogether. And this is something that I personally did. When I was in school, I actually went into architecture school mostly because my brain didn't work on a business side. You see, I used to work at a bank. I worked in a bank for a few years and I hated everything about it. I hated financing. I hated loans. I hated everything that had to do with money and finances. I just wanted to design. I wanted to be creative. But when I entered the actual professional industry of architecture, I realized how important business is. It's important to be able to run your own business, right? And it's important for you to understand, to be able to communicate with clients, because if you have no concept of business, of the idea of business, then you're just going to be producing work that is not going to be in line with the values of your client. Because at the end of the day, most clients, I'm going to say 99% of clients here want to make money. They don't, if, if, if they didn't want to make money, then they wouldn't be designing most of the stuff that you see out here. So actually learning about business puts you so far ahead everybody else that is thinking to themselves that business is going to hurt them. Now, another misconception is that business is really, really complicated. And although, again, this is a, a true statement, business can be very complicated and, or complex, rather. That doesn't mean that we cannot take small bites out of business lessons along with our day-to-day -day work activities, right? And what I mean by that is you can start learning about the basics of business as it relates to architecture. For example, learning about contracts, learning about what kind of insurance uh, architects get, what type of insurance do clients and contractors get, basically what kind of loans do clients get, how, how do clients get loans. These are all things that should actually be important to you as a designer and as an architect. Now, you don't have to be a specialist in these things, but just knowing these things are very important and it's something that you should actually be curious about. And if you're not curious about it, then start kind of looking into it because I promise you, the more you look into these kind of things and put yourself in the different shoes of all the roles that go into putting a building together, the more interest that you're going to get into all of these elements that make up architecture altogether. So again, we're kind of taught to not get into business because it's going to distract us from the real thing, which is the aesthetics. But uh, I'm telling you, that is just uh, very wrong to do. So no, you don't have to be a business person. You don't have to know anything about business, but you should definitely start to pick things up and learn things along 
along the way. And as a matter of fact, if you want to get licensed in the United States uh, to take the ARE, then you need to understand the business side of architecture. So if school is telling you one thing, but then the accreditation board is telling you another thing, then I mean, who do you think is right? The people that are just telling you to design things or the people that are giving you the license to allow you to design things? I mean, come on, these are things that you don't think about. So now that we've got that part out of the way, I want you, I almost wanna brainwash you guys for a moment. I wanna erase your mind out of everything that you've been taught in school and I wanna instill, which is kind of funny, it's kind of meta because that's exactly what school does. School erases your mind and brainwashes you <laughs> into think, it's such a not great word, but I'm gonna go ahead with it. it, it they're basically convincing you that you know nothing of the de design and they're refreshing, they're resetting your brain to teach you design. Well, I kinda want you to have that same mentality with business. I want you to kinda reset your mind and think to yourself, believe that you can learn about business. Remember, we're not looking to become bankers here, but we're just looking to be more informed in architecture, in the business of architecture. So now that we have all that explained, we're all on the same level, we all agree that business is important and nothing that is business related will hurt us, it will actually help us, we can move into the next step. Naturally, this step is developing. Now, Developing is, when I used to hear that word, it was a very scary word to me because I pictured a board of men in suits, like men in black type thing, just making uh, you know decisions based off of spreadsheets and creating these giant skyscrapers and then you know rolling away on a yacht while people like you and me sat behind a computer screen and drafted away and created the designs that these spreadsheets basically generated and although all, a lot of that is true you know a lot of that is true that doesn't have to be the way that we perform and that's why i think that it is so important that architects become the developers because developers are focused with min maxing profits whereas architects have more of a balance like don't get me wrong architects and designers want to make money but they understand the importance of culture the import the importance of of spaces of aesthetics all these other things that really is what makes good architecture so it's really not scary when you break down and dumb down what developing is. It's just another word for creating. Now, the same way that the architect is a person that like orchestrates and coordinates the structural engineer, the client, the construction, the MEP, that's what the architect does. The developer does the same thing but on the financial side, on the land acquisition side, you know? And dumbing those things down, it's all right, I wanna build this, right? And I have a piece of land and I wanna put this building on this piece of land and I need money to do that. And so that's when all these questions start coming up that developers get concerned by, like what type of building would belong there, right? What would help out uh, this community and what would generate the most profit? And again, developers tend to lean more to what's gonna generate the most profit while architects tend to lean into, well, what can benefit the community while also generating profit, right? Because we don't want to create buildings at a loss here. Uh, we're not going to work uh, at a negative, uh, you know, uh, value, right? So as an architect, you could do this. You could kind of push the developer side and you figure out these problems. Like, all right, let me get a piece of land. Well, first I need money to get a piece of land. How do I get money, right? Another misconception is that developers are rich. And again, it is true, a successful developer is rich, but that doesn't mean that because you don't have money, you cannot get money. There's so many ways to get money. I'm not going to get into that here. That's something that you guys can research or you can just follow along my journey because this is an introduction into me being a guinea pig as a, uh, as be basically diving into the world of development. This is just a very simple introduction. But getting money, you can get investors, right? You can get uh, loans from banks. What kind of loans can you get? There's so many, there's like USDA loans apparently now for, cer for certain types of projects that you can work on. You can get something like a business line of credit that's big enough. Uh, the, the money is there, guys, the money is there. What's not there is the person that's willing to take the risk that's knowledgeable enough on how to create these buildings, 
be able to sell them or rent them out or whatever you know the, the purpose of the development is. But the point is, you need a piece of land, you need some money, neither of those are impossible to get, okay? You just gotta open your mind a little bit. Like, stop thinking about this as a sole responsibility. There has to be partnerships, there has to be groups. You could do this by yourself, definitely. Um, I want to give you a, a small anecdote here. A few years ago, when I first got into the idea of developing, right? When I first got really interested and I was buying books and all this stuff, I, uh, I found a YouTube video on the, on the subject. And one of the comments was an architect who had developed his own building. So I commented and I asked him uh, if I could reach out to him somehow. And he actually gave me his website. I was able to connect with him, we ended up on a one hour Zoom call where he gave me a video presentation of his building. He had basically bought a piece of land and built, I, I, I wanna say it was definitely multi-housing, but it was apartments, right? It was like a student uh, apartment building with four units, I believe, but they are the most beautiful um, built apartment buildings that you can think of. Like the facade was unique and beautiful and I really don't want to get too much into the aesthetics of it, but just believe me here that, that, that it was a beautiful design that you can tell that an architect had designed. And when I talked to him, I basically asked him like, hey, you know, because I'm very upfront with people, right? When it comes to things like this, I'm like, basically, are you rich? Are you like, tell me, are you rich? Like, do you come from money? And he told me, no, uh, I had a pretty normal um amount of money saved up, right? This was, I, I don't really, really remember, like before I was gonna film this video, I wanted to kind of gather that data cause this was about four years ago that I had that call with that gentleman. Uh, I don't really remember anything. I don't remember his name. I don't remember the, the firm name. I don't remember anything where it was located. Unfortunately, if I do find it in my previous emails, I'll go ahead and pin that as a comment. But the point was that this was a regular guy. He was a regular architect. He was probably like in his forties. He knew a lot about architecture and 2008 happened. You know, there was this market crash and he had money in the bank. Now, I don't know how much money, but it was probably like 50,000, 100,000, right? Enough to give down payment and to get the process started, right? Now, it could have been a million, I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, just based off what I know now, you really don't need that much cash. And you don't, sometimes you don't even need cash at all. But the point is, this, this architect was able to design this beautiful apartment building, uh, which I believe, again, was four units. He was renting out each unit to students, and he was profiting off of each unit. So not only was he making money passively, he actually got to say that he designed these buildings, right? He bought the land, he built it, he designed it, and now he's owning it. It's like full circle, right? So that's, that's the power of being a developer as an architect. Which brings me at the very beginning of this video, I said something which was, there's two reasons, right? There's the financial health, but there's also the health of your mind. And what exactly do I mean by that? You see, I left that part out, but it was, it was specific. It was because it, it was how I wanted to end this video. A lot of times, architects and designers go into the field thinking that they're gonna be the ones designing these buildings, but unfortunately, that's not the case. If you wanna design buildings, you need to be the developer. As an architect, we make very, very valuable assets to developers, but we do not call all of the shots. As developers, you are the one calling the shots, okay? So that's something that I want you guys to remember that for you to be fulfilled as architects and designers, you need to have the power in your hands, right? Because that, that's where it comes, all, all, the, all the complaints that I hear about architecture is, I work a lot, I don't make enough money, and I don't get to design shit. That's basically, in a nutshell, what architects complain about. So guess what? If you become the developer, you get to maximize profits however you're able to do that. It becomes, honestly, like a puzzle, which is sick, to be honest. It's, like, amazing. You get the ability to design it. Now, obviously, there's other governing principles, like what can you design on this piece of land, you know, and all the factors that go into it. Um, but you get the power to make these decisions. You're at the top of the food chain. That gives you confidence, you know, and that's, that's honestly what makes you happy in the career. So that's pretty much the reason why 
This, if you came into this video thinking like, all right, he's gonna, this is gonna be a crash course into how I can become a developer starting, uh, you know, right now and in the next month, I'm gonna be a developer. That, that's not this. I, I don't think I can ever give you that, to be honest with you. But my plan is to basically help you guys, like build up the, the confidence in each of you guys, the same way that I've been able to build it in myself, because as I, as I tell you, and as I will continue to tell you, I came from just nothing, right? I came from nothing. Just, I wanted to be the guy behind the computer screen, drawing my little blueprints. And as the years go by, right? And as I went through school and then eventually I graduated and I started working and I, you know, busted my ass for years and years and years, I started to gain this confidence, but I still see so many architects lack this confidence. So moving forward, my goal is to help you guys um, get get that confidence and, and hopefully show you guys that you guys are business people. You guys are designers. You guys are creators. Okay. So stop letting other people tell you what you are or, or what you're not. And so with that, uh, I want to tell you guys that I want this video to serve as like a, like a hub. Right. Again, this is an introduction uh, into the world of development and architecture. There's other more established figures in the space. I'm just a, a small fish in a gigantic ocean. But I thought it, rather than 10 years from now show you where I'm at, I wanted to document this. I, I wanted to take this moment to document where I'm at. And little by little, as I get deeper and deeper into the world of developing, show you guys the process so that you guys can mimic it and, and you know adapt it to be your own path into development. And so with that, I want this video to be a hub. So if you are watching this and you're uh, uh, anything, if you're a drafter, if you're a 3D modeler, mo modeler if you're a developer yourself, um, I want you to leave a comment and let me know, share anything, anything that, that this video made you think about, go ahead and share that with you. And plans for the future is to talk about developers that I personally know, that I've worked with in the past, that I've done work for them and talk about those experiences. Those, those are gonna be the next things that I wanna talk about. And so, um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and end it there before I continue uh, making this over, you know, longer than it has to be. So with that, peace out everybody. See you guys soon.